afternoon. We um, start again from uh, considering our problem and our problem uh, specifically for my lectures for this part of the course is about the possible substitution of plastics with bioplastics or with bio-based plastics, which as may you, you may remember are two different things. So a bioplastic, which is a real new plastic obtained from biological uh, materials, so from starch, from derivatives of the polysaccharide or sugar, and uh, uh, bio-based plastics, which are the conventional plastics, but obtained from biological materials. So for example, uh, an example is uh, uh, polyethylene obtained from ethanol. Okay, having said that, um, the main question is that most, uh, most um, plastics in reality are, uh, most plastic waste is obtained from packaging. And the packaging is, uh, requires to be a few, requires to have some characteristics. To be effective, of course, because you need to transport your items and you need to protect them against a number of situations. One can be damage, but then contamination, for example. Then it needs to be ecological in the sense that it doesn't have to emit some toxic chemicals which in most cases we call as volatile organic compounds, um, which in particular are uh, particularly critical in the case of food, of course, of food contact. So food packaging is a sub system of the whole of packaging. Then it needs to be ergonomic because it needs to be managed in some way, and it needs also to communicate because marketing people are communicating a number of um, number of characteristics through packaging. Uh, the main characteristic, of course, is uh, ingredients, for example, or expired date. But there are, there is more than that, than this. For example, use precautions are communicated through packaging as well. Okay, uh, then we may consider that end of life, at end of life, we may recycle packaging, which is a possibility, or we may compost it if the plastic is compostable, if it's made of a plastic which is compostable. Um, composting means a biodegradation at a velocity which is interesting for nature, for agricultural production. So in practice, it needs to be decomposed in a few months, and uh, the 95% of its mass has to be gone. And of course, uh, it needs not to emit uh, toxic um, gases, vapors, which are going to go into soil or we can consider to incinerate it and this perspective is still there for some kinds of plastics for example not for um not for uh, pvc or polyvinyl chloride but other plastics uh, we don't care that much if they are incinerated or not in reality it is possible also there is a Further question, we may consider different temperatures and different amounts of air we introduce or oxygen we introduce into combustion. And uh, uh, in some cases, uh, there is still the possibility to uh, have this kind of thermal or, or even chemical recycling of um, plastics. So to come back to the original uh, components, to the original hydrocarbons. Okay, having said that, packaging 
it's also uh, on different levels. We have different levels of packaging. We have the primary, secondary, and tertiary packaging. Primary packaging is the one we certainly need to envelop our content. A milk bottle, a water bottle, is absolutely necessary to keep the content inside. So primary packaging is the one we cannot avoid. Then there is secondary packaging, which is useful for showing, for example, at supermarket, you put a number of primary containers together. And this, um, in some cases, might be avoided. It's a, always a question of policy and so on, but for marketing reasons, it's usually the case that you try to uh, also for ease of exposition, for ease of showing that you prefer having a secondary part. This has some involvement with transportation because you, you can see that also people use secondary packaging to transport to dispose them supermarket shelf for example but then what is really involved with transportation is the tertiary packaging which is the big containers which contain a lot of, of uh, smaller containers and which can be avoided Example, an example, for example, with the ink cartridges, you may have uh, the, the example I show there. There is the ink cartridge, which is the primary container, but has some problems because it will make, you may get spoiled and you may, uh, some ink can spill and so on. So you have a secondary package and then a tertiary package. Uh, or some types, uh, some different types of tertiary packaging which allow them to be transported. Apart from that difference, the idea is that we need to reduce the amount of packaging whenever possible. And um, we need to do that also because, as I was saying at the beginning, the majority of waste we produce is coming from factories, at least material waste. Then when we go to Liquid and so, uh, liquid and uh, gases is something different, but in general terms, packaging is the responsible for, for the majority of the waste. Okay, um, then we come to the idea that well, plastics and polymers came out as materials. Plastic is not the same as polymer because plastic includes a polymer. A polymer is uh, the, of the plastics because you need the polymer to make a plastic uh, then plastics uh, is the polymer plus some additives and on Monday some additives like amplifier coloring uh, um, and so on and so on, and uh, um, some plasticizers as well, because in some cases polymer is not that mechanical suitable to form plastic. For example, on starch plastics, we need some glycerol and, uh, and uh, for example, acetic acid to form some, uh, or to form really the plastic. Then you have some ceramic material like talk, like calcium carbonate, which are additives. And the whole is called plastic. Uh, there are a few ideas which we need to get rid of. First of all, plastics, all plastics degrade uh, in a different time. There is no plastic which is as a whole completely free from degradation. The question is that the degradation might be different. In a sense, the types of degradation, in the sense that you have a degradation as the effect of light, photo degradation, 
sunlight as it shown by by these uh, um, bugs down here and uh, uh, because the one is lighter of lighter color because it, it is uh, also the green and uh, uh, then you have thermal degradation which for most plastics doesn't start or normal petrochemical plastics doesn't start at the temperature we are able to attain so under the sun they don't degrade normally possibly they degrade slightly more if they if for example seawater and so on but as in general terms thermal degradation is not much involved in petrochemical when you have chemical degradation this might happen this might happen because there are some aggressive um, acids or alkali which may have an effect on it what is uh, the difference in, uh, is that what we can easily imagine that degradation produces a decrease of mechanical properties then fragmentation etc and then the coloring and so on and this has importance also from a marketing point of view because if something is decolored, reuse is discouraged. You wouldn't use something which has been spoiled, damaged due to photo degradation, for example. Um, in uh, bioplastics, bioplastics undergo usually all four of these degradations and with an emphasis on biological degradation. There is uh, some there are some considerations to be done that biological degradations might be de desirable in some cases. For example, if I want to release a drug from plastics, from a polymer, I need to re release the drug. The, the peel of uh, the or the um, this is a common principle in medicine that the pill, what happens in our gut is that we put the, uh, we take a pill and then the pill disintegrates and it releases the drug. This can be used uh, as, as a principle with, for which biopolymers are very useful because there might be my, um, Whilst I could not ingest a, a pill made in polypropylene and whatever, but I could easily ingest something which is made by starchy, jelly material, and then it releases the drug. So in some cases, this is desirable. And uh, apart from our not being involved in two pharmaceutical uh, questions, it is important to know that because uh, is important to control to control and end of life this kind of uh, degradation so composting means controlling biological degradation um, there is a, a number of questions about there are a number of questions about bioplastics what, one of the question is that as i was saying it's not sure that everything which is bio is better so we need to be clear about the fact that this moment in time, we don't have a bioplastics which have the performance that we expect from plastics. The performance are considerably lower. Also because they undergo the degradation, there is, there is a connection between the two. But for example, polylactic acid has performance which are lower, especially in some terms like shear, for example, performance with respect okay so this is one question to be clear about especially if we keep of course the comparison needs to be fair so we can have the same need to have the same thickness and if we compare two kinds of plastic of the same thickness in most cases a bioplastic is in pain in so there is another way to go which has been proposed a number of times. For example, here you see the image is small, but I hope you will see better in, uh, in the presentation, which I will include in uh, my website. The P, if you have a PET bottle, there is a possibility. In reality, there are enzymes which are able to uh, disintegrate 
the, the, and depolymerize, then depolymerize the PET bottle to get the original chemicals, which are going to be terephthalate. And then, since the enzyme provides some sugars, ethylene glycol, which you can use into uh, chemical industry. Then there are some bacteria which are investigated more and more, and uh, like the Pseudomonas cutida, which is able to, to dissolve again, to depolymerize and obtain the same result. So you can get the same result with enzymes or with bacteria, either with enzymes or with bacteria. This is something which is a kind of a research application. You wouldn't uh, expect that in the media they talk a lot about plastics being depolymerized by uh, enzyme and or bacteria. The problem is that you can um, you, you um, can either use these uh, 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 chemicals in the chemical industry, like other products, um, or you can use that these two for a biofuel cell, like in especially ethylene glycol, you can use it to produce hemp. Um, having said that, this is a possibility because we keep the all the plastic and then we produce um, then we are able to um, produce these chemicals and in, in practical terms the advantage is that we don't go at high temperatures which means energy but the disadvantage is that we are not sure yet that at the industrial scale we are able to control either the enzymes or the bacteria but I'll show more than, than this because it's a, it's a perspective that needs to be taken into account. It adds to the other perspective that I showed. Bottom left, you see an image which is a false image because when you degrade and, and you want to compost, compost bottle, this is what happens, but this is not re referred to composting. When you compost, first of all, you first of all you grind, you make into small pieces your bottle, and then it's compostable. It can be inserted into compost. This is true. Uh, this is true, but in reality, the three images unless there is some chemical involved to are very separated in time. The time that goes from the first to the third image may be quite long. It's not compatible with composting. Because composting requires, first of all, mechanical grinding in very small pieces. OK. This uh, leads us to question of which are the compostability criteria. One uh, standard was the American standard, the D6400, which is uh, not that far from the European standard, the 13432, which involves three aspects. Uh, the main question is that the main difference between the two is that the EN13432 is more focused on films. In engineering, we call films any materials with thickness, which is lower than half a millimeter, which, or if you prefer, 500 microns. In real terms, most films are much lower than that. Most films are around 100 microns or so. The ones which we use in bags, supermarket are in some cases even lower. 
So three aspects are considered in this materials compostability criteria. When you say compostability, you mean I can insert it in compost, in the prepared compost, in an industrial system, and it will not affect the quality of compost. So it's considered compostable. I make it into fragments, and then from these fragments, I expect three things that they mineralize. So they are converted 90% into carbon dioxide, uh, water and biomass, etc. And the action of the microbes is uh, sufficient to uh, allow that. And this is compatible with what happens with the common biomass, like leaves, mouth, grass, and so on. Uh, consider, for example, that branches are not considered because they are not in compost mode, because they are too full of lignin, kind of cellulosic material. The time frame is six months. Everything needs to, up, to happen in six months. Six months apply also to disintegration and safety. But safety means that uh, the phyto toxicity needs to be within limits, so you wouldn't expect to have heavy metals, EOC, the volatile organic compounds. They, they need to, to be 50% less than the soil limit. There is There are tables, I don't go into detail about that, I could go in the next lecture possibly, but the idea is that there are some contents which are allowed in the soil for heavy metals. For example, they may say that chromium is a number of parts per million allowed in the soil which are different from what is allowed in water, depending on which kind of water you consider, because also here there is a difference, industrial water or not. Drinkable water, basically, for example, from should be absent, needs to be absent. Instead, there is some limited allowance in industrial water. But apart from these details, the allowances are always very low in terms of parts per million. And for safety, it needs to be lower than 50%. And the idea that if it is too close to the limit, it may exceed the limit eventually. That's the question in there, because we need to have some tolerance, which is considered the 50% to 50% order. Um, also because something can happen in the soil that in some cases may lead to a higher concentration, so it's better to be safe. Then uh, disintegration means that uh, less than 10% uh, uh, is done is obtained from pieces which have one dimension, one dimension of more than two millimeters of practice, they don't pass through the sea, the two millimeter sea. EN13432 concentrated more on packaging, but in most cases, these are the, the uh, bioplastic bags, um, rooms. And uh, Directive makes another important difference, which is the difference between a component and a constituent. The component may not be uh, compostable because they are easily separated from the bulk of it, from the bulk, and the constituent uh, might not be separated from the bulk of it. Uh, in other, in other sense, considering. Uh, not a, not a plastic bag, but, but a piece of packaging, more, a more complex piece of packaging. There are some parts which might be easily removed. You may have heard, for example, when you do the differentiated waste collection, 
then in some case they ask you to remove it. For example, if you consider a bottle, the component the, the, the cap, the cap might be a component. So you can remove the cap easily if you unscrew the cap and you put it inside. Then you have the constituent, which is the whole bottle, um, which is a uh, bulk of the packaging and it stays together all together. In fact, as a matter of fact, you find out that also in PET bottles, the cap is made on, on always on polyethylene and butter format higher thickness and, uh, and there is not a terephthalate one, just a polyethylene, um, usually a high density polyethylene, but there might be caps also in polypropylene inside. Anyway, it can, it can be removed. Component can be removed. The constituent cannot be removed easily. So if uh, I go for composting, it's important that the constituent is uh, Full compostable. If the component is not, it might be removed. Also in industrial systems, I may find ways to remove the, com the component. Okay, um, the packaging, the, the packaging, as I was saying, have a number of uh, uh, characteristics and of objectives, like coming back to the first slide. And uh, uh, I need to protect against a number of uh, number of items, a number of questions of problems. Why I'm talking of this? I'm talking about this because, um, as you may uh, understand, composting also to take into account a number of other questions. For example, insect infestation microorganism infestation and so biological contamination as a whole bioplastics you also come back to the question of the possible formation of mold which in some cases might not be that good for the quality of compost then there are some other uh, questions which are more which are more general uh, on packaging, but affect always the success or not success of the packaging, and also the marketing uh, success. For example, it needs to be uh, protected from vibration, from magnetic effect, and so on, from general impact, which is the main uh, mechanical damage uh, the packaging uh, suffers. The fact that it is dropped from somewhere and uh, it needs not to withstand a certain impact. Then you have a number of other um, uh, issues, like uh, the presence of temperature fluctuations, uh, which uh, in some cases, uh, um, in some cases might, might be uh, harmful for, uh, for packaging. So for example, the exposition to hot and cold weather. Um, not all packaging, as you may remember, not all packaging is uh, suitable, for example, for refrigeration. Not all plastics are suitable. This is another uh, subject issue. Anyway, you may, um, you may see that compostability is a an aspect which is considered also by a number of engineering standards, of more general engineering standards. I report them as uh, numbers. They are always standards from the ASTM, which means American Society for Standards for um, Testing and Materials, sorry, sorry, American Society for Testing and Materials. And uh, um, these, uh, could be um, look at that into the usually you find the abstract in some cases or even the complete standards over the over the net. But what is important is to understand that uh, there are a number of standards which concern the 
particular the D5988, to conserve the aerobic degradation of plastic materials in soil. So it interacts with the, uh, the previous, start, uh, previous standard in composting because in practical terms, it says, um, time frame, it says whether uh, the, resi the residual material can be further degraded after composting. Because there is a, we integrate composting in soil environment, the 5988 uh, was uh, generated by one concern, the fact that um, the quality of compost was not as desired in particular after introduction of the compost. Okay, once again, you, you can uh, see that the duration is six months. Six months is a typical duration and it's from, you can consider from the autumn, uh, spring, practical, practical terms. So you soak uh, autumn and then you collect, collect your, your vegetables and or similar uh, cycles, always based on six months duration. Um, and uh, um, so there is concern for the quality of compost. There is concern of the possibility of uh, um, not aerobic uh, degradation, but also anaerobic degradation. So in, uh, in some cases, there is a, a, also a question of uh, possibly biodegrading plastic materials in anaerobic conditions, CP10 standard. So um, the idea is that we would like to avoid landfilling. The idea of all these standards is that we would like to avoid landfilling of plastics, especially as such. They would take space and, in some cases, even toxic compost. But the reality, to be pragmatic, the reality is that still landfilling of plastic is a practice which is quite used, even if they were they were ground into all pieces. It's still something that happens. So it is important to understand uh, whether, for example, in an anaerobic digester, uh, it is possible to biodegrade um, plastics. Uh, when, uh, when they say plastic here, they don't directly say bioplastics, because you need to consider that for some plastic, some kind of biological degradation is possible. Usually, Plastics obtained from petrol are not compostable. I would say they are not compostable. So in, in general terms, 5988 uh, concerns more biological uh, bioplastics or, um, or in any case, plastics that contain biological, because they are biological materials biological originated material or, or materials originated from biological ruined materials. In other sense, you may have, for example, to make an example, there is no law that hinders us for, it, for to making a mixture, for example, of polyethylene with polylactic acid. I can make a blend and say, well, a part doesn't biodegrade the polyethylene bit, but the polylactic acid bit, it does. So, it might be suitable to get some energy for, for example, for a biofuel production in, for the anaerobic digester, or even to, um, to get very close to composting condition, to get the, the biodegradation, which is, which with further treatment may lead even to composting. Okay. Um, yeah, I would go further into this because I, I, I suggest there, I would like to say many more things before we stop our, our lecture. 
I prefer to go without any pause as, as last time because you finished before and I think it's the uh, best way. Um, composting, why should we go for composting? So it's, a, it's an option. Please remember that the composting is an option. Even with bioplastic, composting remains an option because I can have a bioplastic which is much thicker for example, the bioplastic, the polylactic acid, which I use in 3, 3D printing, which is not compostable because it's, it's, it's too thick. It has mechanical resistance. On the other side, it would be very difficult to make it compostable. Um, I could add some, uh, some additives in order to make it compostable, but it was really not. So there is a number of uh, questions which, uh, as always, uh, try to think about these questions more than than, than uh, learning by heart. So please do, um, try to understand what is the sense of this, uh, also of this slide, of this scheme. I may have a number of uh, um, problems. In the composting, I would like to ensure the nutrient supply. And this is quite obvious. I don't, I don't want that composting harms uh, my crop. And it needs to keep the soil moisture at the good level. So, of course, if there is too much plastic, real plastic, into my compostable material, it might not absorb water and this result in a drier soil. It needs to be incorporated into soil. And so composting, there is not a compostable plastics, although they try very hard to make a compostable plastic that is good for every soil. This is not the case because soil has different characteristics from the geological point of view which involve also more superficial and certain presence of surface characteristic, for example, the presence of um, the presence of other uh, substances in the soil in terms of acids and alkalis, which may which influence the pH of the soil. Then I may consider, of course, which kind of uh, a crop I am I have planted. Uh, if the soil is workable, uh, if the soil um, compost that doesn't have to damage the soil, so we, we keep it workable. It might dialogue, have a dialogue with biological properties of the soil. So the stream of bacteria which are present in the Then I would like to uh, keep as high as possible my crop yield. And uh, the more general, in more general terms, since in many cases compost is used in monoculture, needs to uh, help me to suppress pathogens and weeds. Um, this is uh, uh, this this is a question that is again connected with the quality of compost, but in general terms. Uh, it allows carbon sequestration. So uh, if I have good compost, I, uh, I can remove the carbon uh, dioxide from the atmosphere. I, it, it helps in carbon sequestration instead of burning my plastics in other terms. I can use on the soil and therefore it makes the plant grow and the plant generate oxygen. Uh, you may consider the crop, but even a small in terms of dimension crop generates some amount of oxygen by consuming. So this has an importance in general terms. So you would say, uh, starting from top left, carbon sequestration, I can obtain carbon sequestration, but I need to consider all of the other. And therefore, might not be that easy. So, say, so the 
question, uh, in, yeah, as in many cases, the question is uh, quite uh, tricky because uh, there, is, there has been advertisement about bioplastics and in many cases, um, bioplastics have been presented, have been introduced as something which I can simply grind up. In some cases, they even don't consider grinding up the bioplastics. They consider as such, I can dig a hole and put my bottle inside my bioplastic bottle, bioplastic, bioplastic bag, and something will, will happen. Something which I hope will be composting. Uh, well, this is not the case, of course, because the bioplastics are, um, bioplastic are, materials which can be composted in an industrial composting system. In an industrial composting system. In most cases, this is not possible at all because I don't have the um, mixture with a, a prepared compost. I don't have the conditions for composting. I don't have uh, I don't have also possibly the grinding facility or the mechanical facility which, which allow me to the plastic to prepare this. Okay, so um, here is a scheme, for example, uh, of integration of a compost with a digester, with a robotic digester. And you can see here that what's happening now the, um, fact that I can include beef and yard feedstock and uh, beef and yard feedstocks, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, I can I can introduce it, and uh, um, I can not only introduce it uh, in uh, the, in the sense of. Uh, um, agro waste, but in leaf yard feedstock, I can imagine indeed there is some bioplastic. Please consider one thing that an industrial composter does, uh, is not intended to, at, at the present in, moment in time, I don't know in 10 or 20 years time, but I would be quite doubtful about that. I don't know in 10, 20 or 20 years time, but I'm not sure that the composter is just you probably imagine that the compost is just made to put your bioplastics bag and then smash them and put into there. The composter is a general one, an industrial composter to make it rentable is a general one. So you have garden waste, selected garden waste, which is a big problem um, because the compostability of a lot of garden waste is not ensured a lot at all. Then bioplastics, which is a fraction of the, that leaf yard feedstock. Then you have food waste, which is introduced in the digest, digester, and uh, which creates biogas, and biogas is used to operate the composter. And you, you, you insert also the digestate into the composter. I think this is very self standing. You are able to understand what it means. Uh, in practical terms, the, the digester is for an anaerobic digest, digestion. What you find in the end, what you generate in the end, you generate some carbon dioxide, which, which you cannot really avoid. You generate some compost and some residuals. Some residuals, for example, the inert, the inert which you can further reuse because possibly in um, bioplastics and also in the, the whole of the layer, leaf yard feedstock and the food waste, you have something which in the end is mineralized, becomes inorganic. The most common uh, item would be, um, would be sand, silicon, there is much more than this, calcium carbonate and so on. Um, also, because when you think of food waste feedstock, 
simple example to show what I mean. Eggshells are food waste. Eggshell are, are calcium carbonate. We put eggshells in organic and so do I, but in the end, they are food waste, but they are not compostable. Anyway, they work. They don't hinder the working of the, the digester. In the end, they end up as residuals in the compost because they are not compostable. They don't hinder, they don't create any problem unless you have just eggshells from other plants. In that case, it would be a problem, but you have some calcium carbonate, it's not a problem. Uh, it also contributes to the production of uh, biogas like something else. Not only starch obtained by plastics are compostable. We can, there are more and more attempts, as I was saying, I'm not stereotyping, but the Americans are better enthusiastic of their original, original in the sense of uh, previous plastics. Plastics we know all too well, the big paper plastics, polyethylene polyester, polystyrene, particular. And uh, therefore, there are more and more attempts to try to see if we can do something more. This is a this is a simple scheme of composting that removes a number of ideas you may have about it. This is very brutal, I would say. You have just the, the so-called windrow. Windrow is a pile of things. They grow into temperature because they, there is the action of bacteria. There are different types of bacteria in those details later on but apart from this you can easily say that um, there is a kind of screening of filtering and, 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 and so on and uh, it's important that they are shredded or they are mashed down etc um, of course there are some questions which are still un, un, unresolved but the fact that the removal of stuff costs quite a lot. So the quality of collection affects the quality of compost because these costs, and I wouldn't be completely sure that they are able to remove the whole of it. Because if there is a, an entire glass bottle, it's possible that even by hand they are removed. If they are fragments of glass, they would stay there. In the end, they don't harm the quality of uh, compost that much there. Anyway, there is a quality of uh, collection. Um, the question of green waste, it's very complex. And uh, um, in the last few lectures before Easter, then after Easter, we will have um, more, more lectures about uh, the energy, concentrating on how energy and on, on uh, energy from uh, petrol and on the, manage on the management and on the, on the sustainability professor and uh, um, before that I would like to complete the, the um, reasoning about the organic what we call the organic our, uh, our organic in uh, down out, out of our goal and um, we assume that everything is compost which is not usually the case anyway um, This is a scheme for a composting process. Uh, there is not much more than what was said for the common people, for the layman people. So, um, apart from the fact that we, uh, we have a really a uh, reactor, so we, have not, we may not have just a pile, just a window, but, but we may have a real, a real reactor. Um, the material is uh, can be turned then can be turned by hand. So uh, it's moved by hand or you can have uh, static piles which don't move but they're empty. So in practice either I can move it and make uh, air enter. That's what the camp the company the farmer does or I can have some floors of uh, some piles disposed into different floors 
which uh, I can introduce a, a controller the way operates. As always, this is better because if I control introduce air uh, at controller the way I rates I control the process, the speed of the process, and uh, the speed of the process as well. So it's better that air is uh, um, introduced at a controlled rate. Um, it's also better because I tend to focus, if I make floors of uh, static files, it's also better because I can Yeah, microorganism that might be also worms in some case. Vermicomposting is something slightly different, which I will concentrate on next time. Anyway, there might be mainly bacteria, microorganisms, which have their own activity, and it would be better if I try to control this. Then uh, there is a big Problem, which is the application of uh, pesticides, which may be, might be remain might remain in the um, material I have material from organic collection, so green material, um, and it's not that easy that microorganisms are able to analyze or to integrate. Anyway, there is there are some other processes which might be uh, applied, for example, by active carbon to pesticides at a certain stage to get into the, the um, material into static parts. Then I can perform some other absorption or thermal conversion, etc. Or I can radiate in order to neutralize uh, pesticides or transform. Um, of course, there is a temperature. Uh, the, as we were saying, windrow, uh, it's a pile where temperature goes uh, at a level much higher than the temperature to have. So you may get even a which is good because also pathogens, so um, bacteria get create serious physical health problems are neutralized, which is important also for the uh, compost activity because uh, composting activity because in the end I may end up a compost which is present with the uh, pathogens may harm the yield of the plant. In general, um, there are different different microorganisms. There are the mesophilic and and, and the, the, the ones that grow at more than forty around forty degrees are ther considered ther thermophilic. Um, the, um, so, uh, without going to details on on, uh, on bacteria. Uh, the, the, the best thing to say is that in practice it is important to control the temperature profile because it affects the type of bacteria, the presence of pathogens, and the yield of compost. Also, the time that I get to mature compost, higher the temperature faster the reactions that happen, it's also microbiological. It can mature the compost well before the time to do it. It's good not to get that close in six months to control the compost, because I may have surprises on it. Because I consider that also the, uh, it's not completely isolated from the outside temperature. They may have also variation in the temperature and also variations in the input. They may have an inflow of uh, organic waste, which might be considerably valuable. 
season by season because, for example, there is the question of human plants. We have lots of leaves, leaves of different uh, trees, and therefore we have activity in terms of uh, amounts of cellulose and different uh, composting ability. Uh, this is uh, an example of a temperature profile. Uh, of course, the time, the time scale is uh, a great detail, but what in practice happens um, is that um, temperature profile, temperature reaches a maximum and then goes down back to around in ambient temperature. I may do this on the field uh, just by protecting it in, in some ways, and therefore uh, the temperature It's clear that I am more able, if you see, compare A with B, it's clear that I am more able to control temperature into B, because I flatten the curve, uh, that 60 degrees is uh, the maximum temperature that a composting system should have. Above that, uh, it's uh, energy which is spent in inactivation because uh, in practice pathogens are mostly inactivated at 60 degrees and there is no reason to go further. On the other side, in windrow composting costs less and I'm, I am not able to control it. On the other side, um, you can easily see that um, you can easily see that the curves are flatter in this case, and therefore the time is also reduced. The time scale is arbitrary, but you can easily assume that indeed you get your compost ready. So um, it's divided into three, into three um, four parts. The first part is a it's a kind of uh, quasi linear growth of the temp growth of the temperature because it's starting preparing the compost. So the microorganisms are developing and starting their option, their um, their action. And after that, we have B, where the temperature goes down to uh, 45 degrees, and the B is the time of action of the rapidly thermophilic microorganisms. Then a C is the residual action to allow it maturing completely. Most it is completed in uh, after B than in C. It's, uh, in fact, it's better than I complete B uh, as uh, time as short as possible. Then in uh, C, it completes the maturation, and then in D, I, uh, the final part where I reverse to the, um, the initial loss. Uh, there are other questions. How much air do I have in there? Of course, I control better air into uh, if I pile up in different levels my uh, compost is better. Right? I need to take measurements. I need to uh, aggregate to control the amount of I don't have a window with the control system. Because if I ration, the problem with, uh, and you can see in the curve in, in here, the problem with uh, A is that uh, these uh, up and ups and downs of the curve indicated that the aeration is um, not constant. It's not it's variable from part to part. In fact, I carry on turning. Um, but as, as you may know, the, the farmer carries on turning the, the row line because uh, uh, 
uh, otherwise it just it just get air from one side and not from the other and so we let's deal with this upstream downs because the microbiological activity is variable from part to part of my group i need to measure a number of ion and number of fraction okay um measurements do uh, one some measurements are very basic like uh, bulk density well of course i take my file i get the same way my file in very very simple ways and i can uh, and i can uh, know in the, the the volume i can uh, get the bulk density um, i can uh, take normally take a sample and and the bulk density Can have the measurements more accurate in the lab, more secure measurements. So I go above 100 degrees. We have much water than was in the rain. By the difference of weight, I get by the degree I get how much water, how much ammonia is absorbed. Uh, the kind of a, a cation exchange which gives me a, an idea of how many salts, which kind types of salts are present in my system. Remember that even in PO2, we have lots of uh, calcium sodium. So, um, this in fact is what we Uh, these are measurements which uh, uh, are not, it's not the typical measurement of the farmer does. An important measurement that it's more significant than all the, the rest. Uh, in in farms, they, they usually do that by approximation because they know which kind of plants they are going to grow, etc. And, and the carbon to nitrogen ratio is there is no reason in principle that uh, a polymer obtained by fat or by oil uh, would not be compostable apart from the fact that there is and therefore the uh, carbon nitrogen ratio is much more than that. and in uh, Practical terms, it wouldn't work on its own. It would the pH, I should regulate it on the one on the soil, which is not always obvious. Uh, if you have, because the cluster compost system creates compost for a large number of farms, unless I have so much. Soil. I have I have a monoculture, for example, for a large extent of land, and I have, can have my own compost. I could regulate the pH exactly. Um, so um, the pH should be around from five to five to eight. Um, it is uh, important that the, the composition is reasonably um, fast. Also to uh, avoid, also to avoid the full order. In the case of uh, um, full orders, apart from the uh, unpleasantly, unpleasantness, as you can understand, uh, have uh, for the farmer have a significance because. They indicate that the conditions are very acid. If the conditions are very acid, the, the compost uh, is not likely to work on the soil. We can regulate the, the pH in a case of uh, metal composting. You add sodium acetate. In other cases, you may simply add some minerals like some sand. 
as a, as a whole brings the bridge. And of course, there are some other uh, measurements which uh, which need to carry to carry out. Out, uh, which are the amount of phosphorus, and phosphorus uh, leads to grow. So weeds, remember that phosphorus eutrophication and weeds growing. So in the end, you may have uh, if there is too much phosphorus, you can have not a pile of compost, but a pile of compost with lots of weeds. So I need you. You need to purify the compost, uh, take, take, taking off the weeds and so on. In any case, it's a problem. Um, heavy metals, but I have already uh, spoken of it, like mainly uh, chromium, also, but you know, lead, uh, or others shouldn't be present, but uh, if the composting is close to then this case an industrial activity is the possible problem. Uh, your, your organic material, you could may have some. And of course, uh, the inerts are, are nice to come bring back uh, the composting piles to higher pH value, but they slow down the composting process. So not too many. Many, uh, so in the end, you don't want to have a pile of sand, which is quite obvious. But needs to be clarified. And this is an example. But uh, for example, in some cases, um, you know that the scope of this kind of study. Um, in some cases, since there is a concern on the quality of compost, because you may have very large the composting system, which gives you a compost, which in the end uh, doesn't fit very much with your, it doesn't, it's not very good for your own, for your own soil and for your own. So in some cases, what uh, does happen? I take my waste, the waste I have, I produce wine, so I have some waste. I have some waste which might be uh, grape, grape seeds, which might be soaps and so on. Soaps from the, the, the vine are very uh, thin, so it might be soaps. And uh, here, for example, measurements of temperature and of um, temperature and of uh, um, to have been done this uh, pile of compost and uh, uh, it was interesting because they have done they had waste and they wanted to know uh, which was the right uh, the right uh, ratio between large and soaps so in other words fabricate the best compost best possible compost of course from their uh, waste so they had sludge, which is the final product of production of uh, wine, basically. Um, and uh, soaps, the residue from the plants. And uh, they, they made this kind of ratio. This is a typical uh, way of proceeding. You want to get the exact formula, and then you have to proceed, for example, these two options. Um, you see that this is not that easy to decide because there is an influence of watering. Watering is an instrument of some kind. And uh, turning and then watering, probably because uh, the season was changing at a certain moment. It was becoming from very, very high temperature. 70, you see 70 is too much, then I water it. And again, when, every time it goes above six, they water it. And but also here, then the full arrow uh, represents instead turning. Uh, it was a winter also uh, in turning a quite uh, time to make the action quite 
in the other direction. Okay, so there is, it, it is a possible, a possibility there, it is possible, there is a possibility of, as always, you could make compost from your waste instead of then getting compost from a general waste, a general organic waste, which has been collected from a number of places. This is an option which is possible. If it works, it's more suitable for your soil, for your crops, and it's also cheaper because you, you don't spend anything. Instead, you need to buy compost. Um, so it is uh, interesting. Please note also that uh, if things are more, 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 more um, productive system with, with high added value, primary has a high added, added value, and as a consequence, I may have a lot of waste and I won't be and, um, and, and I And I would like to have this kind of experiment of making compost myself. Because in, in terms of making a, a compost system, I may have an initial investment, especially after I want those initial investments, but this might, might be compensated by the fact that I don't go to transport waste or someone to transport waste to another one. Okay, we are almost at the end of uh, our. Uh, what I want to say, uh, I, I have to give some hints of the fact that also some, um, some petroplastics might be composed, uh, might be decomposed. I was showing about polyethylene, there could be an enzyme way to um, decompose it and a bacteria way to decompose it. Styrofoam. Styrofoam means cell polystyrene. Styrofoam is a packaging material, it's the principal packaging material, especially not for food, hardly ever for food, with little use of uh, polystyrene, um, especially uh, in refrigeration. There is a use in polystyrene. Um, um, I, I, want, I didn't want to say there is no use in this of, of uh, styrofoam, of course. I have very good use in styrofoam. But uh, the, um, what I wanted to say in reality is that it's a minority the use of, uh, not the biggest share, the use of uh, styrofoam in those uh, general packaging that apply to very, I also to very large items is not the case for other plastics. You wouldn't find very large casings in polyethylene, polypropylene, whilst you find them in styrofoam, which means a lot of volume of material, which are not recyclable, not because it's not possible, because it has, doesn't create because the volumes are so large, it's so light, and in the end, even find difficult to pay someone that takes you the police to be recycled. So little value. Therefore, there is interesting to, find, to, um, to study biodegradation of those items. And in particular of the cell polystyrene. And um, here you find a study um, which which is a study done at Stanford uh, starting 2010 then they replied on 2015, and, uh, and I am sure they are still carrying on on that. Very promising. Um, there was some evidence from the literature in the 70s um, where the um, consumption of polystyrene, of especially of styrofoam, packaging industry exploded. It was a boom in a few years. Um, and the, there was the suggestion that it wasn't completely unattackable from steel worms. 
the works that are in minimal in rice and so on. There was some evidence that the, well, that the wolves didn't like plastic as much as uh, rice or potato, etc. But they do feed a bit on it, which was a problem in the 70s. It was a, a problem because they were uh, suggesting, they were, the idea was to expand the use of even even much more, even to the food sector, and even for packaging that could last for quite a long time in storage, etc. And there was this evidence, but then it was uh, discarded a bit because, yes, mealworms attacks a styrofoam, but in the end, it's rare, quite rare, that there is interaction between mealworms and styrofoam. It's, it's hard, difficult to get general storage systems, you find mealworms that can attack your styrofoam. But as a, a scientific report, it was interesting anyway. It was resumed on other grounds in 2010 or so, when they said, well, why not? Why not uh, uh, trying to allow the mealworm to develop and grow so larvae and then and then to develop uh, for them the different stages, which I've shown here, pre-pupa, pupa, imago, etc. And uh, they tried, for example, in 2015, to feed it on the uh, on yeast, on the foam, and on, on, the, um, on the foam, and on the cross-linked foam. So on the, um, basically, and the extruded styrofoam and the, and the Polystyrene and uh, the real styrofoam. So, standard polystyrene and styrofoam. Um, the standard polystyrene tends to be more transparent if you know it, whilst the other one, the real uh, styrofoam, is uh, whitish. What happens is that uh, they basically develop quite well. Uh, well, they didn't prefer these. Yeasts, of course, so um, potato skins or whatever, or uh, residues of uh, meal, all the meal worms. And what happens is that you get some biomass from the polystyrene and fecula. Fecula are the excrements of the um, fecula, is mineralized. Um, I don't know if it is the, the way, this is the way, but this is one way, one possibility, because the problem of styrofoam, especially in the in Okay, um, after that, I think uh, I finish with my lecture. Um, uh, of course, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask, uh, to send me an email. Um, what I uh, am exposing in these lectures uh, is the possibility to take plastic to bioplastics. And now uh, we have spoken a bit about waste, but now I need to concentrate uh, more and more. Next time we'll talk uh, a bit more on verbal composting. This is an example of composting by words. Because in the end you get with biomass and uh, and also the um, at end of life the worms belong to the biomass anyway and and the fecula so mineralized waste. This is a, a possible option. We will uh, carry on with vermicomposting composting and with fabricating plastic from waste. This is another option which is coming more and more into the limelight because in reality um, we have a lot of waste which could be used to produce plastic instead of creating a monoculture like corn and rice. In terms of sustainability, uh, getting rid of waste is a sign 
doing a monoculture to produce plastics, bioplastics, might be a sign plus, might be a sign minus, because it depends. Depends on the competition, on the needs, on where we are, depends on which new sites to open in Africa. And uh, um, therefore, uh, I think I think I illustrated uh, all one what I wanted to say today, and um, we will carry on uh, until uh, on this uh, site. We will uh, continue with the rest of the other uh, subjects, and then. Uh, we suppose at the end to prepare a uh, report, I would say an educational paper, paper ambitious on uh, one subject about sustainability, one subject that you are interested in. I have not particular preference on the subject you you need to have a, a genuine interest. Of course, please contact me about which kind of subject you want to take. I will be happy to discuss with you or to tell you the possibility of the subject to be available. So, okay, so uh, see you on uh, next Monday. And uh, for now, uh, have, have a nice week. See you next